Hello, everyone. Welcome Ooh. to another special episode today. What a oh, snap. Oh, snap. Sci-fi. Right, people. All right, Gossel. people. Ooh. Well, right. how's everyone doing before we get, we jump in? We're doing good. I think I'm going to burn some incense. Yeah, I should have burned some incense today. Why you need, you to Wusa? Uh, no, just a vibe. Just creating the vibe, you know? I can't smoke a spliff, so, you know, I just figured I'd burn some oh incense, make it Lord. feel like, you know? Well, Listen. speaking of incense, I, what they say? Sage? Basil? Sage? Oh, shit. I got some downstairs. Yeah, this lady I follow, I'm going to give her a shout out. I love her. She's my person. If she's listening. Oh, we'll have to tag her. Yes, we'll definitely tag her. But she's the Queen Poe. She's really good at, and she had a thing where she was saying how you could, like, cleanse your energy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and say is one of the things she was saying. I need to try that. It's so funny you said that because I purchased um, about maybe a year ago a incense waterfall, which is so neat. And it comes with these little, little, little incense that you put in there. And you should see the smoke comes down like a waterfall. Um, oh. It is so damn. And it and place smells good. And the way that it just falls, it is super neat. So, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. That's pretty cool. But what the heck Lisa doing over there? Are I was you, trying to like the match. I was trying to... <laughs> I was like, are you burning it now? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I'm I'm trying... burning her incense now? Girl, I'm trying to light the match and it won't light. Well, let's get into our topic since Lisa's over here trying to light a match, ladies and gentlemen. And she should because today, drum roll, please. We are doing all things Lisa. Sakbase, you're listening to Unfiltered Liming with BLT. Every week, we will reflect on our journeys on trying to navigate between our parents' traditional culture versus American culture. We are your hosts, Bertie, the Haitian sensation, Lisa, the Dominican diva, and Terry, the tantalizing trini. No one's talking. So let's get unfiltered. Oh, I'm excited. So t- Elisa is going to talk about herself, what she wants to share. If you guys have any questions, you can DM her. DM unfiltered. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scratch that. Talk, talk about putting me on blast. <laughs> Lisa will be happy to answer almost all your questions. Almost. What the heck are you doing over <laughs> I cannot. I, I don't know what she's doing, uh-uh. folks. So I'm just going to go ahead because I don't know what she's doing. I'm going to let her explain what she's doing and explain all things Lisa while she's putting on one of her all things that she always does, her, her lips. Lisa Shout Lisa out to Fenty, please, because Lisa lives in the Fenty on her lips day in and day out. What color, Lisa? Maybe they could sponsor us. No, this is a gloss bomb. It's not a color? No, mm-mm, it's a gloss uh, bomb. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, as I line my lips with my Fenty gloss bomb, all things Lisa. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. This episode's drink is my personal favorite, tequila ocho plata. I prefer my drink sipped neat. The flavor is clean, medium to mild agave notes, and aged in oak barrels. Enjoy. Wait, wait, I have a question before you get started. So why um, all things Lisa? What does that really mean? All things Lisa. We're all uh, complicated in our own little way. So That is true. I thought it'd be a good idea um, just for our listeners to get to know a little more about me. So I put together pieces of all things Lisa. I like that. Mm-hmm. Let's get started. I'm excited. You know, I got my questions, but <laughs> <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. All right, ladies. So what I did is I put I put a few things about myself together that I'm going to read to you, ladies. And then when we're done, you can ask me questions, because in this thing that I'm going to read to you is pieces of all things Lisa. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. All ears. I'm ready. All right. I inhale love, family, and friends in the air. I draw from all things seductive and inviting. 
I carry the scales of what is wanted can be had and to spare. Inspire before you expire, so I heard him say. I say keep them saying, come and talk to me like Joe to see. But when you wind up and push up, they like it like this. Only he has my permission. That was way past due. I'm always down for a thought-provoking conversation. But they stay taking that kindness for a weakness. But that DNA goes 0 to 100 in 2.5 seconds. I care, but I'm learning not to care what they think. My faith has me on this amazing journey this year. He, the hill in the city of Jerusalem, was born, but had no inclination. A short time later, that same beautiful soul that watched me take my first breath, I'd watch her take her last. Just pieces of all things Lisa. I like that. That was deep. That was real, real deep. I like that. I like that. Did Thank you put you. that's something that you put together, right? I just was in a mood today and I just decided to sit down and just just start writing. I like that. That was really, really nice. So Yeah, that was good. So tell me, what does in, in a summation, what does what does that mean to average Joe? All of it is different pieces of me. I like that. Okay. So basically you're talking about some, you know, your heart, your head, your exterior, your interior, like, yep. Nice. Okay. Okay. So how did you come up with the poem, I guess, instead of just telling, you know, like a list, how did you come up with? I just sat and thought of different pieces. If I had to explain myself to someone, mm -hmm. just all the different pieces of me and I wrote them down and then I just kind of put it all together. You know, the part I like, right? On the floor. Part I <laughs> no. The part I like was about the man and he, was he kissing you? No. You were giving him permission. No. <laughs> Okay, see. So you share some very, so just so that our fan listening to your, you share some very intimate stuff about you. Like, what would you say if a fan was listening to you would like to connect with you? What is, what is one thing in the poem that like stands out like best about you that they would feel like, oh, okay. The one thing that connects with me, I think the most, um, when I said I'm always down for a, a thought provoking conversation, mm -hmm. but they stay taking that kindness for a weakness, mm -hmm. but that DNA goes zero to 100 in 2.5 seconds. I think that right there sums up a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. That Dominica DNA. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, Caribbeans, we hot. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We got that little temper going on. So you ready. So a lot of times we're nice and we're loving people mm -hmm. and people tend to take advantage of that. We're quick to let people in our homes, mm -hmm. you know, feed them, be there for them if they in need and everything. But then also too, a lot of times people take that for granted mm -hmm. and take advantage of that and take that kindness for a weakness. So, and then it's like, once you do that, then we got to lose our temper. Then mm -hmm. we got to act crazy. And then, you know, it's... Then the Bacchanal start. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, so bringing my, up the rare. Yep. <laughs> so my other question becomes, is that part of... So let me ask you this, because you say you used to care and you're learning not to, right? Is that yes. something that you are kind of like forcing yourself to do? Or is that something because of growth, like you mentioned, that you're changing your viewpoint, like you just said, you know, you you see differently and people take advantage. So what mm -hmm. is causing you to kind of like put yourself in that state of mind, I guess? I think because certain things have transpired definitely in this year mm -hmm. that people have shown me that how I feel about them and what level that I put them on in my life, mm -hmm. it's not the same for them. Uh. So because it's not the same for them, what my ideologies are, how a friendship or how family should be is not the same for them. So I need to adjust to myself mm -hmm. and I need to take a step back and then also to not take it personal how mm -hmm. somebody acts and how they feel. That's just their DNA makeup and mm -hmm. that their trials and tribulations that they go that's going on in their life and in their world mm -hmm. and don't take it personal because again 
obviously I put them on a certain pedestal or level, but they don't put me on that. And that's fine Mm -hmm. because I might have other people in my life that I don't put them on that pedestal, but they might have me on a pedestal and I'm not, I'm in their eyes. I might be falling short. Mm -hmm. Is it because do you think that if COVID had not happened, you would have, would that have been noticeable in your relationships? I don't think it's COVID. I don't think it has anything to do with COVID. Oh. No, I don't think it has to do with COVID. Mm. Is that Cinderella? Yes. <laughs> yo, she's like, yo, she's I don't know what you're doing. Man. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing in there, but I need your attention right now. So, so Lisa, tell me, um, I, my question, what is the erection in your life? What has erected in your life? So when I mentioned the hill in the city of Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. my nephew, that is the definition of his name. So he was actually born Mm -hmm. on the day of the insurrection. So (gasps) even though, that's right. So even though the craziness that was coming, that's what came into our lives that day. So that, that's what, okay. That makes sense. I just want to go back to, you know, when you were talking about pedestals and people putting you on pedestals and stuff like that, or you putting them on pedestals, do you think that in the past your thought process was, if I if I treat you one way, I expect the same thing? Oh, I thought that for a long time. I, I had to adjust that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it's, you know, it's that thing, you know, they said treat people like how mm-hmm. you want to be treated. Be treated. Mm-hmm. But let me ask you this, though. So I guess I took that literally. Without interrupting your, your thought process in what you were about to say. So I I think you made a good point. We treat people how we want to be treated, but they don't ask us to put them on no pedestal. We no. do that to ourselves. Yes, that is very good true. Point. That's right? a very, very true because point. Because if you really look at your friends and your relationship, unless you're having a conversation, right? Because mm-hmm. I think if you're in a relationship, we have those conversations with our partners, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm this and you're, I'm your girlfriend, I'm your fiance, I'm your wife, whatever, right? We have certain, but with family, I don't think we ever have those conversations and with friends, we don't have those conversation of which kind of like pedal stool or what does that look like. So we put people on these things and then they don't measure up and it's like, mm-hmm. well, is mm-hmm. it all fault? You understand what I'm saying? Like it kind of yeah. like makes you look at yourself like, well. Mm-hmm. So I think also too, I think friends, you have different friends for different mm-hmm. seasons yep. and reasons. Reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you kind of, you don't put them on a pedestal, but you have them in their file cabinets. Categories. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Your categories, you know? You got them in their file mm-hmm. cabinets. But the interesting thing about family, family is above all of that. Mm, but, well. But, um, no, wait, hold up. No, no, hold up. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, wait a minute. Let me clarify that. Let me clarify. Okay. Right? It's funny how we, we both are like, wait a minute. <laughs> exactly. No, hold on. Hold on. We would like to think that family is above friends. We would like to think that, Mm -hmm. but that's not the case. You understand? It's always like you growing up, they're like family first, family first. Mm -hmm. However, you don't get to pick your family members and family members still got personalities. And Mm -hmm. a lot of your family members, you probably wouldn't have made them your friends. Let's keep Mm -hmm. it real. Because your friends, you choose, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But your family, you don't choose them. They come with the DNA. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in a perfect world, you like to... To say family comes before friends, but a lot of times your friends are come through for you way more than your family, and then in turn you end up mm-hmm. they get moved up the the pedestal. They get yeah, moved up a little yeah. bit. So I just want to clarify that. But then, don't you think? I, I, well, I should say for me, I think that family is also what you make it because you mm-hmm. could have the one that you're born into, but then you could have the one that you make. Okay, like mm-hmm. B and Lisa, you know. I would consider you part of my family. You know, just how the dynamics are. So as you go along and as you build relationships, there are certain people that you want to bring into that fold, into that, into your family, mm-hmm. um, I should say bubble, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, and I think that to me, when I say that's family, that's what, you know, what I consider that. That's, I, that's what you consider, yeah. I yeah. guess I was referring to blood, but yes, you're correct. As the years mm-hmm. go on, there's people you bring in your life and 
and yes, they do become family. They're not blood, but they become family. But I was initially talking about blood relatives. Maybe I should have said blood relatives. Maybe I should have said that. So let me ask you this mm-hmm. about family, because another thing, too, that I've realized is going back to the pedal stool that we put people on, right? Because I think you mentioned the point that they are also, like, I think when we're born, like our parents, we see them as our parents, mom and dad, our mm-hmm. siblings or sisters, right? And sometimes I think it's hard for us to see them as human beings. Like, okay, yeah. even though yeah. she's my sister, but she was a wife, she's a mother. You understand what I'm saying? My mom mm-hmm. was the same. Like, she was my mother, but yo, she had a whole life. And I think um, a lot of times with our family, at least for me, I didn't realize it. Like, sometimes we don't put the human aspect of it because we think, oh, it's family. Like, but well, as you define what that is, you understand what I'm saying? Because like you said, not every fam- family looks the same, acts the same, feels the same or whatever. But sometimes we think, well, we're blood, we're family, so they should do X, Y, Z. But why? Is it because society has said that that's the way it's been? Um, yeah, it's your perception. Been, mm-hmm. Yeah, have we been giving like, especially mm-hmm. when we connect, like, right? So I would say for the Haitian family members that I have, have that are in Haiti compared to the family members I have that are here. The dynamics are different in the way that they are there for one another and the way that they view one another and the way that they respect one another and the way that they support one another. Because the thing is, going back to differences, I think, between American culture and Caribbean culture is the fact that when you come to America, the way our culture view family as being important, it becomes different because we've talked about it, right? It's about making a future for ourselves right it's about making the money or whatever so we lose sometimes the what would would i say the closeness the dynamic right of that Mm -hmm. family that if you go to certain places in africa or whatever that are very traditional they hold that value like that's what i'm saying they Mm -hmm. hold like the elders value they Mm -hmm. hold all these things which we could we could adapt it here because I've had conversation with a lot of my African American friends and a lot of different cultures and they would love for that to be a you know here but it's like something is missing for us to be able to you understand what I'm saying like I don't know if I'm making sense but they still no. hold like I know mm-hmm. in Haiti they're still like a elders you understand what I'm saying like these are your elders so if there's issue you know look look I'm gonna go to my elders to give me guidance and that's it's like a level of but B, to, to, to piggyback on what you're saying, I think that where we come from, um, they hold that, you're absolutely correct, they still hold that traditional hierarchy. But mm-hmm. I think when they come here to America, they kind of, instead of the tightness that they had, mm-hmm. it gets a little bit loose. And they, mm-hmm. and they start to then the American aspect of it starts to infiltrate. And then mm-hmm. by, yeah, that's and, it. The infiltration begins. Exa- and, and then as more of us are born here, it gets watered down. Mm-hmm. It gets murky. It gets murky. Exactly. Because it doesn't get passed. I mean, it right. gets passed down, but it doesn't get passed down how it is back home. Correct. So I will tell you this Mm-mm. funny story. Like this African-American guy that I dated, and he remembers when he was actually, he's from New York, and he said he remember being little that every Sunday, no matter where they were, they would go to his grandma's house, right? Mm-hmm. Because family dinners were very important. And he goes somewhere along the way, everybody moved away, right? So mm-hmm. his family, his mom came down south or whatever, whatever, and it became like those tradition became almost obsolete Mm -hmm. because now he had kids and his kids he didn't do that with his kids but he remembered that and how impactful it was you understand what I'm saying yep we have the same thing yeah we have the same thing so my that's why my perception is Mm -hmm. families first because growing up in the Bronx I mean it it was a whole crew of us Mm -hmm. and it was every Sunday it Mm -hmm. was at my parents house my aunt's house this aunt house you know we go to the South Bronx I have an aunt um a aunt a couple aunts and uncle they actually have the damn whole co-op building and you just went from floor to floor <laughs> and that's on sunday like you know what i'm saying and it was just that was it was us 
Yeah. It was us. Mm-hmm. So for me, growing up, as I've gotten older, I'm just kind of like looking at the other ones like, well, what's wrong with you? The other ones who? Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. other, like, my other family members that maybe, like, because we're getting older. Everybody goes away mm-hmm. to ha- go to college. They get make new friends. And just like you said, it gets watered down and it gets murky. But in my mind, I'm still back in that place. Mm-hmm. So you know, where it's like family first, your your family comes first before your friends. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that tight unit, the cousins, the whatever. Mm-hmm. So then when you get a little bit older, my, my ideas of how family should be, mm-hmm. they're not like that because it's gotten murky. It's all watered down. So then what happens is, however, I'm thinking things should be, then I become to get, I get disappointed, right? Mm, Expectations. The expectations, you know what I'm saying? But it's purely because of my upbringing, you know what I'm saying? And holding on to that. So that's where I'm like, okay, that's cool. It's no love loss. I just got to adjust myself and my thinking. So let me ask you, okay, so let me ask you ladies this. And Lisa, let's start with you since this is all things Lisa. What are you doing to be able to get back to the basics, for for lack of a better? That was going to be my question for you, Lisa. (laughs) (laughs) When you say get back to the basics, what do you mean? When I say that, I mean, what are you doing to bring it back to the traditional um, way that you know it and you were brought up in it. What are, what well, are you doing? What's your contribution? My contribution mm-hmm. is I'm going to remain steady and fast who I am. I am going to give the same energy that I'm receiving. I will continue to, well, we can't do it now because it's COVID, but when it wasn't COVID, like, Mm -hmm. you know, I have my get togethers and all of that stuff. And Hey, if you don't come, no big deal. But whoever Mm -hmm. is important to me or whoever deems me important to them, they'll be there. And that's okay with me. And I'm okay with that. And, and my new family is some of my blood relatives and Mm -hmm. my friends that I've had that are over 20 years, over 20 years that now are not my new family. So that's what I will continue to give my energy to. You're mixing old with new. You're mixing, yeah. Okay. Yeah, mixing old with new. I'm going to stay true to myself and keep doing what I want to do. Hey, if, you know, and matching okay. energies. Have okay. you had the conversation like with that. your dad about it? <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Like just that, that part means. of it, just that part of, because he mm-hmm. was part of it, right? And he would yes. be, so it would be his generation, right? So did I have the conversations as far as why did it stop? Yeah, yeah, just in general. Yeah. Like- oh, yeah, we've had the conversations. Um, a lot of it also, too, is moving away. You know what I'm saying? There was We had a big, knit, tight-knit family that was in the Bronx, but then it came to a point, like, I guess, you know, people start doing better for themselves. Their kids are getting older. They want to have them in different environments or better environments Mm -hmm. or what they think you know according to america what a better environment is as far as i'm concerned if you came from dominica if you're in the bronx i figure you you, that's a better environment but you know that's just that's just all things me um so you know they moved out to the suburbs you know we a couple people moved to uh pennsylvania a couple people moved out to long island including my family too so then everybody got stretched out oh jersey so then everybody got stretched out and it's just like then it became holidays is when everybody got back together and just maybe once in a blue somewhere in between but then once us cousins got older we were like listen we grown this is foolishness and then we created cousins weekend that's good oh that's cool Mm -hmm. i like that yeah that that is cool so actually that is something that i started actually i like that i like Mm -hmm. that and that I, blasted COVID slowing yeah, shit down. It did. <laughs> it put a damper on a lot of um, families getting together and the u- and the unity put a damper on it. But, um, okay, so, uh, Bertie, let me ask you the same question. What, do, what are you doing to get back to basics? What's your contribution? For my family, this particular point in my journey, um, I, I I think I told you, lady, I hosted family reunion the mm-hmm. past five, six years. And I think um, because of, you know, well, 
COVID kind of like put a handle. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because for me, when COVID happened, like Lisa, it made me see different perspectives, different avenues. Um, it helped me. So I actually have, and if my family are listening, I mean, it shouldn't be no surprise to y'all, but I've actually, I'm going to stop doing the same reunions. And like Lisa, I am going to restructure who and what contributes my energy of family and right now that consists of my nieces and nephew and Josiah and building a new because yeah, sometimes nice. you can't do the old like you know, like I learned I love learning from history but I've learned a lot of things and um unfortunately it may come back around who knows but for right now I'm not putting my energy into that part of whatever it is you Terry well for me um we're going around the room well for me I think uh it is on both sides of my family. They, I'm losing, we're losing people and I'm trying to glue everybody back together. Um, it's it's a constant battle. It's like the Hat Rocks and the McCoys. You know, people are mm. arguing, people are fighting. And, and when it comes down to it, it's just like over small stuff that we could be able to talk, talk about or talk through. So my mm. last ditch effort that I'm making is for next year to have, you know, to have this family reunion that I've been telling you guys about um, in June. Um, That's on my mother's side. And then also to do something, um, get together on for the family on my father's side Um, because I I definitely feel and see the need that we need to just come together and if it's this last time that we all are just together and then we break apart then it is what it is but at least I tried that that's Mm -hmm. my whole thing at least I tried yeah I feel the same way with my family reunion I could say y'all I give y'all a good five six memories Whoever wants to continue, like, I'm glad, but I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a little bit, like, it drains you. It's like, so very draining. So for me, what's, yeah, and for me, I don't know how you guys feel, but it's like when you're the connector, I could I connect, right? And you don't get that energy in return. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess, again, it's expectation. Mm-hmm. It drains you, and I'm trying to be funny, and you feel like nobody gives a fuck. So guess what? I'm matching yeah. your not give a fuck energy as well. Yeah. So guess what? You're not trying to be funny, but you would think like for me, when COVID started, I texted, I wanted to be like, yo, family, let's do this. And it was like, Cricket. nobody's checking to make sure I'm good. Okay. I mean, Lord, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be me and the Lord have conversation about that. But I was like, oh, they don't give a fuck. Guess what, Lord? Mm-hmm. Keep it moving. <laughs> Move. Yep. One Lord Get out the way. <laughs> Move. Get out the way. Yes. So, you ladies have any other questions for me? But are you are you talking about your mom? Because you mentioned it in the poem. So, I, are you not going there? Or are you going there? And you could like no, I'm go there. The last sentence of your poem it relates to your mom, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so I didn't know how you wanted to address that. Yeah. So um, when I um, mentioned that my faith has taken me on an amazing journey from the highs of my nephew being born to finding out that my mom had stage four cancer and um, unfortunately she lost the battle. I am grateful that I was able to be there with her to um, take care of her in the last days. Um, yeah, it was definitely been an emotional roller coaster considering the fact that we spoke but I just didn't feel like that deep connection um and I think a lot of people can relate as far as mothers and daughter relationship is either a tight bond or it's um do you think it's a west indian thing that's what I was gonna ask you do you think it's- yes mm-hmm. yes yeah, definitely the west indian thing or do you think it's, it's just- a black thing like it's I like us no. as black folks. I mean, there's a documentary of African Americans. It says da- our our mother's daughter that they're African American, and and the similarities. If you've not yeah. watched it, I think it's very weird and similar. Really? Okay, mm-hmm. I have to check that out. You know, I was grateful for the fact that in the end, I was able to love on her and take care of her. Um, as much as she probably has been reluctant in the past, but it was to the point that she was able to receive it. So I got closure from that. 
if that makes sense. And what's the one thing that you would say that your takeaway from that time that you spent with your mom would be? Hmm. Um, sometimes when people say that they're fine, they're okay, and they don't need anything from you or they don't need you there, sometimes they, they do. Mm. They do. Well, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Terry, you are prime suspect. I know mm. that. Why yes. do you think I said that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, huge. That has been a very huge chapter. And I just wanted to also say to our listeners out there, I know we had a nice long pause between season two and three. And these two beautiful ladies on here allowed me the grace and the time to heal and deal and to take care of my mom and lay her to rest and spend time with my family. And I'm forever grateful for that. So I just want to tell you ladies, thank you. You are most welcome. Goes back most... to family. This mm-hmm. is our new, like Terry said, family unit. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry, this should be episode one. This, yep, yeah, maybe. Because you cover the reason why we took such a, a long break. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I like uh, that. Did y'all, did you ladies have any other questions? Oh, yes. How does this all things Lisa affect your sex life? <laughs> you know, I have oh, to ask I the have question. Another one after that, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be the section that I talked about. I say, keep them saying, come talk to me like Jodeci. Oh, yes. <laughs> so there is nothing, girl, there's nothing like, you know, turn on some Jodeci, light some candles. Mm, sound like a good night to me, boy. After, so. the, after the Brazilian... Yes. Okay. Yes. After the Brazilian. Yes. So, ladies, you definitely, you definitely want to keep them saying, "Come talk to me," just like Joe to see. Know what I mean? Are we talking about? Are we talking about downstairs talking? They talking to downstairs or they talking to upstairs? Which one? I I need them talking to every piece from head to toe. Yes. Yes. Hot life fire. Come on! Come on! Come on! Yes. <laughs> but when you wind up and push up, they like it like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they like it like that. Like the and men are going to spill it, right? Yes. Mm. Yes, they like that. <laughs> then they're hiding in the lettuce and tomato aisle, oh as we Lord. previously <laughs> talked about. <laughs> but, and you know what song that is, right? Come and talk to me. No, well, we know Come and Talk to Me is Jodeci. But do you know what Wind Up and Push Up? They like it like this. See, y'all know that song? How it goes. Sing, sing it for me, yeah. No, I'm going to play it. Hold on. Uh oh. Y'all know this one. Yes. So I had to take it back, you know, take it back to our culture, right? That's a good song. Because, see, I had to bring it around because Jodeci was back in the days, right? Mm -hmm. But then I had to bring it back to our culture, you know. So my question that I had is that you mentioned that I carry the scale. Is that because of your, your zodiac sign of being a Libra? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So, you know, being a Libra is always a balancing act. So when I say what is wanted can be had, right? Mm-hmm. So the things that you desire that you want, you can have. But then the other side is there's despair because sometimes you don't always get what you want. And just juggling those things in life, like, you know, and balancing it all out. Is it safe to say for the scales of Libra, one side is peace and the other side is harmony, and it has to be? Yeah, yeah, because if things ain't balanced, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's back Mm -hmm. in here. Yes. Things got to be balanced at all times. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All times. Well, D-Lyman crew, 
This has been great. Is there anything else you would like to share with our fans, with D Lyman Kurubiza? Any other pieces of you, of the L? I would say I don't have a C in my name, but at times I can be complicated, but you know, I'm a oh, oh, learn. I am learning and growing as we go. So, like fine wine, it only gets better with time. Fire! That's bon- where we ended. <laughs> Bonfire! Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing pieces of you. I've learned quite a few things. Oh, yes. Definitely. Very interesting fun fact about you. Uh, I think that that poem was very on point. And it broke down. Mm-hmm. It broke down exactly from head to toe. All things Lisa. And uh, Liming Crew. The Liming Crew out there. If y'all have any questions that y'all want to ask Lisa, um, please let us know. Please reach us on all platforms and ask your question mm. so Lisa could be able to a la prochaine, le out. <laughs> thank you for joining yes. us this week on Unfiltered Liming with BLT check us out on Instagram Twitter and join our Facebook page at Unfiltered Liming with BLT as always subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh exciting content see you next Thursday same time same station. Unfiltered Liming with BLT is edited and produced by Unfiltered Liming with BLT.